I'd now like to uh, bring to the stage and introduce uh, to you formally Paul Tash, who's the chairman and CEO of Times Publishing and chairman of the Pointer Institute Board of Trustees. Paul. Well, thank you very much to all of you for being here tonight, and uh, thank you, Tim. Tonight, we celebrate great journalism, and we will honor an outstanding journalist here. But great work happens only when organizations and leaders are willing to stand up for it. Nelson Pointer knew that, and so does the school that bears his name. So tonight, the Pointer Institute presents this award for distinguished service to journalism to our good and loyal friend, Brian Tierney. Several years ago, when Brian led a group of business people who bought the Philadelphia newspapers, a lot of eyebrows went up. A PR guy as publisher of the Philadelphia Inquirer? One of America's great newspapers? But one of Brian's first stops was the Pointer Institute, and I was struck even then by his enthusiasm and energy for the newspaper business. During Brian's tenure, the Daily News, the Inquirer's sassy tabloid sibling, won a Pulitzer Prize for investigative reporting. The next year, the Inquirer won the Pulitzer Gold Medal for Public Service for exposing chaos in the city schools, reporting that started on Brian's watch. The global financial crisis and the staggering fall of advertising revenues claimed many casualties, and one was Brian's place at the Inquirer. But even after leaving that newspaper, Brian has remained an evangelist for the industry. While some editors and publishers were losing heart, this salesman extraordinaire reminded them and the world that newspapers unique brand of journalism makes a huge difference day in and day out. So when we were putting together the Pointer Foundation to help advance the work of this extraordinary institution, Brian was our clear pick to become the first chair. I may have started out in news, but once in a while I can close a sale myself. That was three years ago, and here we are tonight. So with great pleasure, the Pointer Institute honors someone who not only believes in journalism, but who labors cheerfully, cheerfully, on behalf of the organizations that support it and advance it. So ladies and gentlemen, please join me in congratulating the chair of the Pointer Foundation, my good friend, Brian Tierney. And, and we have to mark the occasion this wonderful piece of glass from Duncan McClellan, who is a world-class local artist in, in glass, and we hope, uh, Brian, that it is a, a wonderful memento of a special evening for us, and I hope for you too. Thank you so much, Paul. Richie Kind, thank you so much. Thank you, Paul. Paul, the PR guy at me knows you're supposed to stand over here now and get the picture taken. <laughs> here we go. Thank you, Paul, for those uh, incredibly kind words, and thank you for your leadership at the Tampa Bay Times, at Pointer, and for journalism literally around the world. Um, 
Earlier, we were there yesterday and we're talking about journalists coming from Afghanistan to Pointer in the last few months, talking about you know, um, people coming from Pakistan who have to come without being known that they're here, but they want to learn more about their skill and their craft to take these tools back to bring freedom and democracy to parts of the world. I also want to thank Tim Franklin, who has done such a great job leading Pointer these last few years. I want to thank Karen Dunlap, whose vision and, and, and example inspired so many, like myself, to get involved. When Paul and Karen asked me, it was at first, uh, OK, yeah, I'll do it. Bob Schieffer, who came here tonight. Bob, I got to tell you, it, it, just to hear your voice, it was like, you know, it was like, ah, oh, I'm melding. This is Bob Schieffer. I've watched him so much, and he has such credibility. And he's, and, and everything you've done, and your example, and your wife, Pat, to come here tonight, I really, really, all of us appreciate it so much. To um, Elisa Jackson, our executive director, who stretches resources and makes so much happen and works so hard and does such with grace and smile, kind of like a, like a duck floating serenely with her feet paddling underneath it, because she does it with so little to support. Thank you. And also want to thank Paul Tash's sidekick, who gets everything done. Annika Keeler as well, who I know here is in the room. I want to thank my fellow board members, who we had just such a terrific time yesterday uh, going through things and whose passion, they share the passion and they want to protect and enhance Pointer. I want to thank my colleagues from Bryan Communications, who have come down here from Philadelphia to be with me tonight, Matt Brocious, Tara Armstrong, Jim Larich as well as Ed Malman and Hillary Vadner, who were with me in the advertising business. They were with me in the newspaper business. They're with me now in my new business and through all these adventures. And most importantly, I want to thank my wife of 35 years, Maud, who's here with me. We've been through a lot of exciting times, Maud, and uh, you've always been the source of tremendous strength and, and been with me through all these wonderful times, and, and, and I love you for that. And my son, Bill, thank you. Thank you, 35 years. And my son, Bill, who's with us and has shared many of these adventures and, and is now with me in the new business, and it's great. And our other son, Brian's at a wedding. Uh, his wife's sister's getting married in Rome tomorrow, so he would be here otherwise. About 12 years ago, um, when I was in advertising and before I was a publisher and the owner of the Philadelphia Inquirer and Daily News, I had a boss say to me one time, and I don't think as a compliment at the time, frankly, I realize in hindsight, he said to me, how do you know so much? And I said, I, I, I blurted out, I said, I read several papers a day. And that's what I tell the young people who work with me every day at, uh, now, too. I say, if you want to be smart, read great newspapers. Read them in print, read them online, read them on a mobile device, but read. Good things, valuable things, important things, things that make life so rewarding in so many ways from a personal level, at a professional level, and a social level come from reading good things, like the newspapers every day. When I led a group of, as Paul said, 14 very civically minded uh, Philadelphians, we were diverse by, by race and, and sex and Republicans and Democrats. We had the Carpenters Union Pension Fund. We had Bruce Toll, a pretty much a non-union uh, home builder. We had them all together, all of whom signed a pledge to not interfere with the editorial integrity of the newspaper. We were motivated by all the right reasons, and we recruited an exceptional editor in Bill Marimo, the two-time Pulitzer Prize winner, to lead the Inquirer. But for me, as the CEO and publisher, it reached a much deeper level just a few months later. Two tremendously gifted journalists who work with me, Ken Delanian and John Sullivan, led by skilled and driven editors, they had pieced together hints of a terrible tale. Children supposedly under the watch of the, of, the, of the watchful eye of the city of Philadelphia's Department of Human Services were dying horrible, horrible deaths due to abuse and neglect. A 14-year-old girl nearly paralyzed because of cerebral palsy died at weighing 46 pounds. A child who was two years old and they suspected the house had danger in it, but people were just letting it go, was killed because she unplugged a video game. And when they tried, they heard about these stories and John and Ken started the investigation, everybody stonewalled them. They went to the city, tried to get information, they fought, they fought. We freedom of information request. They dug, they dug, they went through tens of thousands of records, literally tens of thousands of records. It took months. The investment that that would cost, you can imagine. 
And they pierced it, to, they pieced it together and they brought it to public light. And I was just a few months into my job and I was just blown away when I picked up the paper that morning in my driveway and I was so proud and I went downstairs to thank Ken and John and their editors. And when I went down in the newsroom and I was just the publisher a few months, two months, I went down there and there was a woman there who was an older woman, I'd say in her early 70s, and she had a file of papers about three inches thick, and she was sitting there where they were, and I said, oh, I didn't mean to interrupt, and if you have a meeting, and she said, no, I had no meeting, I just showed up. And they agreed to meet with me. And she said, my daughter is addicted to drugs. My granddaughter is in the, under the supervision of the Department of Human Services. She's gonna die, and these men are gonna help me save my granddaughter's life. And she started to cry, and my eyes filled up. And I went to the elevator, and I leaned against the wall as I went up to the 12th floor of the building and by myself, and I started to cry. And I just said, thank you, Jesus, for putting me in this position at this point in my life. I had great success in business. My agency created James Earl Jones for Verizon. We created advertising cam campaigns for Deloitte around the world, the Pennsylvania Lottery. But at this point in my life to be part of this, and all I was doing was selling the advertising and running the business side, it just felt like great work and important work. So that day I realized this was the most important work of my life. And again, I was just running the operations. Later due to the, due to the and I realized how critical this was, not just like to the community and the world and what we did, even when we was covering the Phillies, how it united, the, or the fact that we would cover the orchestra and a truck driver would say, you know, I didn't think about the Philadelphia Orchestra. I'm going to buy tickets to it. And I said to my Teamster drivers, you're not delivering donuts, man. <laughs> you're delivering the Philadelphia Inquirer. And they frankly started to say, you're right. I said, when you walk in there, there's people want what you have. You know, you're not the Entenmann's guy. And so we created this great spirit, although I do like intimates, don't get me wrong. <laughs> and later on, as, as, as Paul has said, with the wonderful and brilliant reporting of Wendy Ruderman and Barbara Laker with the Philadelphia Daily News won the Pulitzer Prize under Michael Days and Gar Joseph. And under the leadership of Ryan Davis, one of your alums who went on to McKinsey and then I recruited him to run Philly.com, we became the fastest growing news site in the world. And then when Paul and Karen asked me to be part of this, I said I would. So those of you who live in this area should know that around the world, when you talk to journalists in print or digital or broadcast, and you mention Pointer, it's like Pointer. And it's this jewel that's in your community. That's why it's such, such great pride to look around this room and to see this, you know, I'm so glad it's, I wish it was in Philadelphia, to be honest with you. It's such a great thing to have. But you should know that what is done here whether it be people from Des Moines or Philadelphia that we would send down here to train, or from Afghanistan or Pakistan, hundreds of thousands of journalists a year taking part in the courses from 44 states and 81 countries per in person last year. Either we went to them or they came here, 81 countries, think of that. Um, so your support tonight, it's about a civil society, it's about free speech, and it's about democracy and making lives better. So I thank you tonight for this award and I pledge I'll keep helping out. Thank you.